I'm Dr. Paul Jeffords, an orthopedic spine surgeon at Resurgent Spine Center in Atlanta, Georgia. If you are someone who is suffering from back and leg pain from a herniated disc in your lower back and you have failed to improve with non-surgical treatment, you may be a candidate for a surgical procedure called a lumbar microdiscectomy. A lumbar microdiscectomy is 95% successful for relieving radiating leg pain from a herniated disc and is one of the most commonly performed spinal surgeries. A lumbar microdiscectomy is a minimally invasive alternative to a traditional laminectomy. Compared to the open laminectomy, the microdiscectomy can be done through a much smaller incision with less muscle tissue disruption and less bleeding. This can result in decreased pain and a faster recovery for the patient. The surgery is done to remove herniated disc material that is pressing on one or more of the nerves that is exiting from the spinal canal in your lower back. What I would like to do in this video is describe the surgical procedure, talk about what steps you will take in preparing for the surgery, what will happen during the operation, and what you can expect in your recovery. After you have been evaluated by your surgeon and it's been determined that you are in fact a surgical candidate, you will probably want to discuss the next steps with your family and possibly pursue a second opinion. Once you have made the decision to proceed with the surgery, the first thing you will want to do is to schedule a date for your preoperative consultation. It is during this session that you will have the chance to meet with your surgeon and staff, ask any questions you may have, and sign the consent form for surgery. At this time, you will be prescribed any medications for postoperative care and may undergo additional preoperative tests. This may include a chest x-ray, EKG, and blood work. You will check into the hospital or surgery center the morning of your surgery. Your anesthesiologist will bring you into the operating room and put you to sleep for the operation. There are usually two nurses in the OR and a surgical assistant helping your surgeon with the procedure. Once you have been positioned on the operating room table, face down, your surgeon will make a single small incision in your lower back, just over the disc that is herniated. For a single level microdiscectomy, the incision is typically less than one inch in length. An x-ray machine called a fluoroscope is used to image the spine and pinpoint exactly where to place the incision. Dilating tubes are placed through the incision onto the spine using the fluoroscope to guide their position. The tubes separate the muscle fibers and provide access to the spine without cutting the muscles. A retractor is then placed over the final tube to hold the muscle tissue and the tube is removed. A light source and possibly an endoscope or microscope may then be attached to the retractor to provide visualization for the surgeon during the procedure. Through the retractor, your surgeon is now able to create a small opening into the spinal canal by removing some bone and ligament tissue. This is called a laminotomy. The size of a laminotomy is typically no bigger than the size of your small fingernail. The laminotomy gives your surgeon access to the disc and the nerve. Special instruments are then used to retract the nerve slightly to the side so that the herniated disc fragment can be removed, relieving the pressure on the nerve. Only the small portion of the disc that is herniated is removed, and the remainder of the disc material is left intact. At the completion of the surgery, the incision is closed with resorbable stitches that are placed beneath the skin. A typical single-level lumbar microdiscectomy lasts approximately 30 to 45 minutes. Immediately after surgery, you will be taken to the recovery room for one to two hours while the anesthesia wears off and your vital signs are checked. Afterwards, you will be discharged home. Your surgeon will speak to your family while you're in recovery and give them an update on your procedure and condition. The nurses will get you out of bed after surgery and you will be strong enough to walk and climb stairs before leaving the surgery center. You may ride in a car or airplane upon your release. You will be given pain medication and a muscle relaxant to help control post-operative pain and spasms. Please ensure that you do not drive or operate any heavy machinery while on this medication. Approximately two weeks after your surgery, you'll have a post-operative visit with your surgeon and your wound will be checked. You may return to sedentary office or desk work one week after your procedure. If your job demands that you are involved in heavy lifting or frequent bending or climbing, you should wait three months before returning to this type of activity. You can return to moderate duty in six weeks. Typically, your surgeon will see you again to check on your recovery process six weeks after the surgery and then again at three months. You may resume sporting activities such as golf or tennis three months after your surgery. As with any surgical procedure, there are inherent risks. There are three different categories of risks arising from the surgical procedure. There are risks associated with anesthesia, risk of complications that can happen during the operation, and risk of complications that can occur after surgery. Risks of anesthesia are rare in healthy patients, but may include the possibility of allergic reaction to medications, seizures, heart attack, stroke, or even death. Risk of complications during the operation include risk of nerve injury and risk of injury to the nerve sac, which can cause a spinal fluid leak. The risk of these complications is around 1%. 
Finally, after the operation, there are complications that can occur. There is about a 1% chance of infection, and there is a 5 to 10% chance of the same disc re-herniating or one of the other discs in your back herniating. Even without re-herniation, a small percentage of patients may continue to experience back or leg pain. You should talk to your surgeon about these risks. The minimally invasive lumbar microdiscectomy surgery is 95% successful and can be safely performed with little trauma to the surrounding low back muscles. This procedure may result in less post-operative pain and a quicker patient recovery than a traditional open laminectomy. Surgical intervention should always be the last resort, but when all other treatments have failed, this procedure can often provide significant relief of back and leg pain from a herniated disc. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. You may have additional questions, and if so, you may want to consult with your surgeon.